1 Kings 14 is where we pick up. And we saw last week the divided kingdom. We saw the south, the north, the south kingdom is called, comprised of what two tribes? Something and Dan. Dan. <laughs> The southern kingdom is the kingdom of Judah, comprised of the two tribes. The first one, Benjamin, for namesake, Benjamin, Judah, Judah, Judah. And Benjamin. Benjamin, right, Dale? Right, right, Judah. And then the northern kingdom is called the kingdom of Israel. Israel, made up of the remaining ten. So, uh, <clears throat> here we go, 14. Um, somebody please read. The first, yeah, chapter 14 of 1 Kings, first five verses. At that time, Jeroboam's son, Abijah, became very sick. So Jeroboam told his wife, disguise yourself so that no one will recognize you as my wife. Then go to the prophet Abijah at Shiloh, the man who told you, who told me that I would become king. Take him as gift of ten loaves of bread, some cakes and a jar of honey, and ask him what will happen to the boy. So Jeroboam's wife went with Ahijah's home at Shiloh. He was an old man now and could no longer see. But the Lord had told Ahijah, Jeroboam's wife will come here pretending to be someone else. She will ask you about her son, for he's very sick. Give her the answer that I gave you. Okay, so what just happened there? Okay, who who is king, who's who's Jeroboam? He's the, one of the king. Of the He's the king of uh, um, the northern kingdom. The northern kingdom, yeah, the, the northern kingdom, right? So he's the king of Israel at the time. There's two guys with this, about the same name. They sound very similar. Jeroboam, Rehoboam, Jeroboam, Rehoboam. And I'll tell you what the names mean uh, in a moment. Well. Okay, I'll tell you now. Uh, Jeroboam, Jeroboam is uh, the people contend. Uh, interesting name, if that was the name he was given at birth, because the people contended um, for him to be king, contended against, you know, the tribe of Judah, or the house of David. Said, we want this guy to be king. Very interesting. Um, and then what looks like Ahijah, okay, it's uh, um, Aviah. Uh, and it means friend of God. Uh, anytime you see like Yah uh, in a name, that is the abbreviated, uh, approved uh, name of God, Yahweh, that you're not allowed to say. You rarely would ever use the full name of God, but they just use the first part, Yah. So anytime you see a, usually a J-A-H or an I-A-H in a name, um, it's phonetically in English uh, <coughs> creating the yah sound. But anytime you see the yah, like Eliyahu, Elijah, Eliyahu, it's uh, the Lord is God. Yah. So it's Yahweh. So that's what you got right there. So, uh, um, so. The son, though, uh, Jeroboam's son, what's his name? Okay, Abijah. Okay, and it looks like Abijah, not to be confused with Ahijah. Okay, so one looks like an Abijah and one looks like an Ahijah. Right? An Ab and an Ah. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, the Abi or Abijah is Yahweh is my father. And the Ahijah is friend of God. Just so you know. Um, so the heir to the throne right now, the son of Jeroboam, whose name is Ahijah, uh, he is sick. The king, Jeroboam, tells his wife to what? Disguise. Disguise, Disguise yourself and do what? Take gifts. Go to and go to the prophet... His name is Ahia. Okay, uh, that's Ahia's friend of God. Go to the prophet for some reason. 
it's so bizarre. It's as if um, go and pretend you're just somebody, some lady that's kind of concerned. Hey, I heard that you know the king's son is, is sick. Do you do you have an idea to guide him what, what his future is? <coughs> and what happened on her way there? God told him she was gonna. God's yeah. God goes. Uh, uh, actually, you know, since since his eyes are failing, uh, it, it says that right. His his eyes are dim. That is that's that is the the phrase describing you know he's he's an old guy and he's he's got some pretty bad cataracts. You know, he's barely <laughs> seeing. And so what he says, uh, you know, God tells him, uh, "Ladies coming, uh, it's the queen, but she's she's going to try to pull one over on you." And uh, by the way, um, you know, she's coming to inquire about her son who is sick. And before she even gets to do that, this is what you're going to say. And so uh, here, here's what comes next. Um, and Red, if you want to continue 14, I'll be great. To 14. Okay. Please. So when uh, he uh, heard her, her footsteps at the door, he called out, Come in, wife of Jeroboam. Why are you pretending to be someone else? And he told her, I have bad news for you. Give your husband Jeroboam this message from the Lord, the God of Israel. I promoted you from the ranks of the common people and made you ruler over my people, Israel. I ripped the kingdom away from the family of David and I gave it to you. But you have not been like my servant David who obeyed my commands and followed me with all his heart and always did whatever I wanted. You have done more evil than all who lived before you. You have made other gods for yourself and have made me furious with your gold calves. And since you have turned your back on me, I will bring disaster on your dynasty and will destroy every one of your male descendants, <coughs> slave and free alike, anywhere in Israel. I will burn up your royal dynasty as one burns up trash until it's all gone. The members of Jeroboam's family who die in the city will be eaten by dogs, and those who die in the, and those who die in the field will be eaten by vultures. I, the Lord, have spoken. Then Ahijah said to Jeroboam's wife, Go on home, and when you enter the city, the child will die. All Israel will mourn for him and bury him. He is the only member of your family who will have a proper burial, for this child is the only good thing that the Lord, the God of Israel, sees in the entire family of Jeroboam. Wow! Did you get that? Right? So God says what? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Remember what we looked at last week? Remember what Jeroboam did? Yes. Remember that? He goes, I'm going to start my own religion. Mm -hmm. The guy was just coronated king. Yeah. Yeah. God has just said, listen, I'm ripping, you know, uh, the majority of the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon because of these things he's doing. He set up these altars, the idolatry, da, da, da. So I'm going to give it to you. Now, you'd expect him to kind of have a clue and go, well, for me, in order to keep what God's given me, I better not do better what not Solomon do was guilty of, what, which caused God to take it from him. Uh, you know, so I don't want God to take it from me, so I'm not going to do what Solomon did. Wrong. Wrong, but he does. It's nuts. The very first thing he does to inaugurate his, his presidency is to, to create two golden yeah. calves. And that smacks of, you know, good old Aaron, Moses' brother, back in the day, when the nation had just come out of Egypt. And... For some stupid reason, Aaron thinks this is a good idea. Remember that? Yeah. I mean, it literally just defies logic. You think Aaron saw everything. Aaron, as far as we know in the record, because Moses said, you know, I got a speech impediment or whatever. Or I'm just not a public speaker. I'm not confident. You know, you got the wrong guy. You know, can you use my brother? Aaron? All right, all right, all right. You show up with a staff, but I'm gonna. Aaron's going to be my spokesman then. You know, bummer for you, but okay. And so Aaron was right there with Moses, watching everything God did as he drops the ten plagues, one by one, putting the pressure on Pharaoh, who finally says, get out of here, drives them out, you know how that goes. Okay, then God parts the Red Sea, the whole ten yards, and we know everything. Uh, brings them to uh, Mount Sinai. Moses is up on, the, up on the mountain, getting the old Ten Commandments. Aaron goes... Where's my brother? You know? Uh, she whiz. He's not around. You know? Maybe something happened to him. Oh, who knows? He just has this weird idea. Uh, let me see. Well, I'm the priest. Let me see. Um, I should do something priestly. Um, oh! Uh, hey, everybody, you got gold earrings, gold tooth, whatever. You know, give it to me. We'll melt it. And he, and he makes his calf. Okay, this is 
our God. Let's all worship it. And then there's pretty much, it's horrific what the people it's are guilty of in, in the Hebrew. I mean, it, there's an orgy. There's a whole bunch of you go, what on earth just happened? What on earth just happened? How quickly they left the truth. <clears throat> and clearly the God that is, you know, has led them out and, and he has this idea about the cast. And you go, same, the same fingerprints <clears throat> on Aaron's mind and activity with this golden calf. Same fingerprints, I'll say the devil's fingerprints, because his fingerprints are on every false religion. Yes. Yep. Yes. He has Jeroboam creating two golden calves. Not one, he doubles it. There's something about that to me. Yep. And he goes, and then he says, these are the gods that brought you out of the land of Egypt. Oh, he's, it's as if he knows a little bit of his biblical history and he warps it. Then maybe he just kind of makes up whatever is missing in his, in his recollection. <clears throat> and he goes, oh yeah, there's something about the calves and getting out of Egypt, something. I think it went, didn't, it, didn't that work out pretty good for them? I can't remember. Let's do it again. <clears throat> Insane. So God has seen this. God is going to now nuke Jer Jeroboam's house, rightfully so. And I think it's because, you know, if you remember, last week, God sent that prophet, Ahia, you know, no, no named prophet, no named prophet, uh, to that inauguration of the new religion. And you remember that? He, he prophesied against the altar and all that. Old thing. And, and remember uh, Jeroboam's hand? You know, that, remember the whole thing? The frozen yeah, leper's yeah, hand? Yeah, yeah. So, Jeroboam knows he's in trouble. He knows God's not happy with him. That's why he doesn't go himself to the prophet in Shiloh. He sends his wife and says, put on this blonde wig, dark sunglasses, whatever. And, uh, and just say you're, you're, just, you're, you're just a woman from, from the nation, just kind of curious. I mean, literally. How does he think he can pull one over on God? <laughs> Given everything he's already just experienced. Yeah. But he thinks, but you know what? We did that. Yeah. And people in sin, we think we can pull one over on God. We think he doesn't know about this. We hedge our bets. People do this all the time. So, this is what he does. And God clearly just said, well, I got news for you. Um, every, every male in your house is going to die. Every male slave is going to die. Why the male? So can't carry on. Remember that genealogy, everything is substantiated. It's kind of, uh, <clears throat> it, it's noted uh, through the males, uh, the males get the get the acknowledgement. They get the credit. It's the males line. So pretty much, he goes, yeah, we're snuffing out. I'm just snuffing out your your DNA. How's that? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you're never going to be on the throne again. So uh, then, then God uh, tells the prophet to tell her there's a sign in case she doubts it. Tell her um, this is going to happen. This, this this is what's going to prove that. Um, <coughs> Everything I just said, all the men are going to die. Uh, here's the proof. What's the proof? As soon as she walks into town, he's going to die. As soon as you get home, uh, pretty much the moment you get back to your palace, your your son who's sick that you came and inquired me about, uh, he's going to die. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to ask you a question. Why did she go home if she knew that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> if a prophet of God told you you know, if you go back home, the moment you do, your son's going to die right there. Would you go back home? No. no. Unless she didn't believe the prophet. If she didn't believe the prophet, maybe she, that's a risk she's taking, huh? Maybe that's not, maybe that was like symbolic or something. She goes home, as so, soon as she shows up, son dies right there. Mm -hmm. we'll okay. So, um, She's used to a certain lifestyle, though, too. What would she, what would she do? Where else could she 
hide out in a, in a cave? Yeah. <laughs> right. Isn't that interesting? Because I think, you know, it doesn't say she believed the prophet. We don't know. I wonder if she did. Um, and for her to go home can make you think, well, she either didn't believe the prophet or she's going, well, um, if I go home and he dies, I'll never see my son again. Right. If I stay away so he can live, I'll ne never see my son again. Mm, I like the palace life. I'll let my son die. That's the risk she takes. Think about that. She, she lets him find out. The son. I said, what happened with Adam and Eve, right? You know, don't forget, you know, Adam was right there with Eve, and it's kind of like he goes, I'm going to watch what happens to her first. <laughs> and to see, was God telling the truth? You know, he lets her eat first. Very interesting. Okay. So, um, uh, that, that, uh, this really continues. In fact, you know what? Since you're, you're doing such a good job, would you just continue 15 to 18? 15, 14 to 18. In addition, the Lord will raise up a king over Israel who will destroy the family of Jer Jeroboam. This will happen today, even now. And the Lord will shake Israel like a reed whipped about in a stream. He will uproot the people of Israel from this good land that he gave their ancestors, and he will scatter them beyond the Euphrates River. For they have angered the Lord with the Asher, Asherah poles they have set up for worship. Ooh. He will abandon Israel because Jeroboam sinned and made Israel sin along with him. So Jeroboam's wife returned to Tirzah, and the child died just as she walked through the door of her home. And all Israel buried him and mourned for him as the Lord had promised through the prophet Ahijah. The rest of the events in Jeroboam's reign, including all his wars and how he ruled, are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. Jeroboam reigned in Israel 22 years. When Jeroboam died, his son Nadab became the next king. Perfect. Okay, so there you go. Um, she goes home, son dies. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but, but right before that, God even said, you know, uh, the Lord's going to strike Israel as a reed is shaken in the water. Uh, the root of Israel out, out of this good land uh, that he gave to the ancestors, scattered them, etc. Um, he's going to do that in an amazing way, right? I talked about that last year as well. After the last king of Israel, uh, when, when uh, the Assyrians come in and take him. Uh, but uh, what's interesting is that, uh, uh, you know, it says it's because they have made their sacred poles or Asherah poles. Uh, your versions may say, and again, those were those massive, they were big phallic symbols. They were just big male sex organs that were carved usually out of wood, and they just, they set these things up. Literally, they would just set these things up, like telephone poles all around the land, and people would worship at those things. You go, a culture can get there. Wow. But where's our culture? It's getting there. Our, our culture is so sensual. It is just, we're just, it's sexually out of control. It's just a mess. It's a mess. You know, what's on our TV sets? I mean, it's, you know, enter, what's entertainment? You know, it just, it's a mess. What's the porn epidemic? Another mess. I mean, it's, I mean, the, 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 the Asherah poles are all over, you know. And, and I, I think we're worse than, than, uh, than Israel was. It's pretty frightening. Because it's in every house. Well, and ours is spread worldwide with the internet and social media. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the whole world is sex trafficking. The whole, right? Yeah, the whole world is is a, is in trouble. And you know, I would argue the world is is worshiping Baal and Asherah today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you already get that. Okay, so uh, then right there, uh, next next uh, couple of verses, we're told that uh, you know Jeroboam he ruled because this always comes at the end of every king's reign. Uh, he ruled for 22 years, so that's how long he ruled, ruled pretty much um, 930 to 909 B.C. Then he died, and his son, Nadav, succeeds him as the second king now, and uh, Julie's got a question. Didn't the oh, prophet, you have a question? Didn't the prophet say that all males of Jeroboam's bloodline would be destroyed? Yes. But now we find out that's going to come the dog is his son. He survived. He was born after. 
Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So what you'll you'll see. Watch what happens here. Um, there is um, there there is one son um, who is given. This is interesting. The um, uh, a burial. That's in uh, 13, 13. Uh, chapter 14, verse 13. Mm -hmm. This is the son that just dies. The prophecy is that all of your males are going to die. It's going to happen in 15. It's going to happen. Uh, with King Basha. Basha. You'll see this guy. Uh, he's going to show up and he'll do the work. Um, so, uh, but you said one of the sons was made king, correct? correct? Yes. But the death is coming. It's, it hasn't happened yet. The, the, the snuffing out, God hasn't snuffed them all out yet. He says, I'm going to, and he's going to. But it's, being, it's going to be in 15. It'll be in 15. So Jeroboam dies, his son succeeds him, but, but the, the death is coming of all the males. Uh, you'll see. Uh, so, uh, meanwhile, in the southern kingdom, it's one of those little things right now, uh, verses 21 to 31, because you're probably wondering, well, what was going on down, down south? Well, uh, here's what it is. Uh, somebody please read 21 to the end of the chapter, to 31. Rehoboam, son of Solomon, was king in Judah. He was 41 years old when he became king, and he reigned 70, or excuse me, 17 years in Jerusalem, the city the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel and wished to put his name. His mother's name was Nama, and she was an Ammonite. <laughs> Stop right there for a moment! <laughs> Okay, we're, we're, we're going to hear that again uh, 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 in verse 31. What was his mom? She's an Ammonite. Ammonite. Wait, wait, what's that? It's, one day. it's somebody she shouldn't be, he should be married to. Um, you know, so yeah, uh, it's, it's an idol worshiper. Oh, uh, uh, it's a Canaanite, you know. Oh my goodness, okay, keep going. Goes on to say, Judah did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Ding. By the sins they committed, they stirred up his jealous anger, more than those who were before them had done. They also set up for themselves high places, sacred stones, and Asherah poles on every high hill and, in other, and under every spreading tree. They're doing it too! Okay, when it says under, high, under every high hill, under every spreading tree, you need to understand this. Oh my goodness, it's terrible. I can't even talk about this in church. It's x rated Okay. Um, their little worship sites and the way they worship these, the gods of uh, they're, they're, they're gods of fertility well how do you think you worship a god of fertility by acting that, that, it's the, it's the so there was, it's out in the open you'll just kind of walk through town and under that tree there's a couple doing that, something there something there, and they have these little little, little outdoor bedroom sites let's say everywhere, I mean that's are you kidding me? Once again, what's our entertainment in America? Guess how many bedroom scenes are going on in our, our, our TV in America? If you think, oh gosh, how could Israel or Judah do that? What's America doing? I want to remind you, you know, you know, I grew up with, uh, you know, I Love Lucy, when Ricky and Lucy um, had the bedroom scenes, I remind people of this, uh, their bedroom scene, they had twin beds on either side of the room. Yep, and they were fully And did that ever hit you weird? No. Dick Van Dyke So, right? right. They did that. Why did they do that? Because the bedroom was too intimate of a place. Even back then, Hollywood wasn't going to invade that. They weren't going to show even a married couple in bed. It's like, you don't do that. Nope. You don't do that. That's, that's private. There was modesty. There was modesty back then. The Brady Bunch was the first. The Brady Bunch was the first. Yep. Both, both shared the, the same, same bed. bed. Yeah, it was just Wow. It's a story. Wow. It's a story. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that was charged for the tribute. Thank you. That's good. Thank you. Uh, so, but not well. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Did I cut you off? Oh, yeah. Where I go? Sorry. <laughs> my breath trip. Says there is even male, or says there is even male shrine prostitutes in the land that people engaged in. And all the detestable practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. Wow. In the fifth year of King Rehoboam, Shishak, king of, of Egypt, attacked Jerusalem. He's a pharaoh. 
he carried off the treasures of the temple of the Lord and the treasures of the royal palace. He took everything, including all the gold shields Solomon had made. Remember that? Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. So King Rehoboam made bronze shields to replace them and assigned these to the commanders of the guards on duty, the, the entrance of the royal palace. Whenever the king went to the Lord's temple, the guards bore the shields, and afterward they returned them to the guard room. As for the other events of Rehoboam's reign, and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the king of Judah? There was continual warfare between Rehoboam and Jeroboam, and Rehoboam rested with his ancestors, and was buried with them in the city of David. His mother's name was Nama, and she was an Ammonite, and Abijah, uh, his son, has succeeded him as the king. <coughs> okay, <coughs> so... <coughs> Uh, for three years, Judah walked in the way of David and Solomon, and then they become wicked. And the people built these high places, these pillars of worship, the whole thing, to Baal, to Baal, and Asherah. Um, they're abominations. They're found throughout the land, on every high hill, under every green tree, you read, okay? You know, the shady spots were ideal for the immoral worship practices. You don't get sunburned, I guess. Get it? Never mind. Um, there's these male cult prostitutes throughout the land in the fifth year of uh, Revoam, uh, whose name, by the way, means uh, enlarges uh, the people, or he enlarges the people. Like he, he makes them bigger, stronger. Like, yeah, it's an interesting name for, you know, you imagine if you're the king, you name your kid um, a kingly name. You know, he's, the people are going to, it's just going to be better. The nation's going to be bigger and better, you know, uh, <clears throat> under you. <clears throat> and uh, the, uh, the pharaoh of the day invades the land. Sounds like discipline, right? Mm -hmm. God's way of judging a nation is always, most often, by way of foreign invasion. And as he approaches, what happens? So he took all the gold and yeah. stole down. everything. Okay. What else? You know what I think is funny? The shields. The bronze shield. You know, it's 500 gorgeous shields. And he goes, well, uh, what else is shiny? Uh, cheaper, you know. Gold's gone. Let's make him out of bronze. But <clears throat> I, I remind you that you've got to go to Chronicles. And you've got to go to Second Chronicles for additional information, and sometimes there's much more information, and Second Chronicles is even to me often uh, more intriguing than, than the king's record. And so we'll go back and forth from time to time. I don't know if we'll do it tonight, um, but I'll tell you what, what we read in Second Chronicles chapter 15, when this happens, as, as, as Pharaoh is coming, the people repent. And God saves them. The, God, the people just go, oh my gosh, we're so sorry. And uh, uh, God spares Jerusalem from total destruction. From total destruction. They, they get spanked, but, but there's a remnant. It's very interesting. Uh, and, 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 and we find God permits Pharaoh to carry off um, all those uh, those very important gold items and whatnot that God said you need to make this, make this, make this in the worship of me. And it's as if, well, since you're not using them anyway, <laughs> we'll just let Pharaoh, maybe he's got use for them. And so Pharaoh strips uh, the temple and the palace of all these these items that, that were used in the worship of God. Isn't that interesting? You know, again, God... God says, you know, I think in effect, you're not worshiping me. So these items to worship me, you obviously don't need. They're collecting dust. Since they mean nothing to you. Since they mean nothing to you. Yeah, we're, we're going to take them away. And what's interesting, when that happens, you know, there's a bit of a, of a, of a pause then uh, in, in the worshiping of God. And it's as if you want to go down this road, well, I'm going to kind of help you go down this road. I'm going to make it a little more difficult for you to worship me without the things that you're supposed to worship me with. 
And let's see if you get hungry. It's like, you know, I'm going to go without food for a while. Let's see if you're going to get hungry for me. Uh, very interesting. So, uh, we're also uh, told a continual state of war exists between the two kingdoms throughout the 17 years that Rehoboam and Jeroboam simultaneously reigned. Uh, Rehoboam was 41 when he began his reign in 17, uh, or he, at his, when he began his 17 year reign. Rehoboam, he dies, he's buried in the city of David, he's succeeded by his son. Um, your versions will say either Abijam, Abijam, okay, Abijam mm -hmm. or Abijam, uh, you know, and it, it may, or Ahiyam, and, and you might go, is that the prophet's name? Okay, Abijam or Abijam is father of the sea, almost like he's a, a man of the sea. Um, I don't know why he would be named that. Um, some other ancient manuscripts uh, write his name, and some of your versions may be translated from other manuscripts than what I have, uh, that may have the same name of the prophet, Abijah, Abijah, um, that um, uh, we read about you know, uh, earlier. So, uh, don't know exactly for sure which, you know, what his name is, but uh, there it is. Some manuscripts appear to have purposely put uh, a J-A-M sound, let's say, or English, a spelling, on his name, just to distinguish him from the prophet in the scriptures. Don't know for sure. Again, Rehoboam's mother, who would have been one of Solomon's wives, is an Ammonite. That already tells you why Rehoboam was the way he was in part. Uh, his mom was an idolater. Chapter 15, verses 1 to 7, somebody. In the 18th year of King Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, Abijam became king over Judah, and he reigned three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Makah, the granddaughter of Abashalom, and he walked in all the sins of his father, which he had done before him. His heart was not loyal to the Lord his God, as was the heart of his father David. Nevertheless, for David's sake, the Lord his God gave him a lamp in Jer Jerusalem by setting up his son after him by establishing Jerusalem. Because David did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and had not turned aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, except in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. And there was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all the days of his life. Now the rest of the acts of Abijam and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? And there was war between Abijam and Jeroboam. Yeah, did you, uh, so Abijam rested with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. Then Asa, his son, reigned in his place. Perfect. Okay. So um, what throws you off sometimes, when it says, look at 15 verse 1 now, in the 18th year of King Jeroboam, son of Nebat, uh, Abijam began to reign over Judah. So, you understand what, what you're just being told there? Rehoboam reigned 17 years. Mm -hmm. this, and for 17 years, he and uh, Rehoboam are, are reigning simultaneously. Uh, did I say Jeroboam? Jeroboam. Mm -hmm. Rehoboam dies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jeroboam's still <coughs> in, you know, still <coughs> in, in his 18th year. Northern Kingdom. We have a new uh, king on the throne, Southern Kingdom. And this is Abjan. Uh, he reigns three years. Uh, then what? What's he, do? What's he go down in history for? The same thing his father did. She was. Okay. Did, did somebody not tell him? <laughs> somebody not tell him? What's going on, you know, in the family and what, what we don't want to do anymore? Uh, uh, what do we hear about verse 4? What, what does the author tell us? Nevertheless. Uh, maybe that's why his name was changed. J the person under God maybe changed because of his sin and put J-A-M. That, that, that'd be interesting. Yeah, that could be very interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
The writer says, ah, I'm not giving you a good name. <laughs> I'm not going to give you a good name. Good. Yeah, that's very interesting. Uh, so what happens to verse 4? Well, the Lord was, let it continue ruling because of David, for David's sake. The Lord allowed the descendants to continue ruling. Right. And he gave. He still had hope. Abijama's son. All right, okay. Because God goes, you know, I still got this thing. I still got this uh, mm -hmm. promise to David. I got to continue. I still got to make a way to fulfill that promise. Okay, and we always keep the descent of David on the throne, which happens to the very last king. Um, and, uh, you know, and it's interesting, you know, in verse 5, you know, you, get, you tell us, you know, David, hey, never turned away from following my commands. He was my man, except for the issue with Uriah the Hittite. We remember getting him, you know, setting him up to be killed because he took his wife, Bathsheba. Um, again, there's war, verse 6. Uh, the war begun between Rehoboam and Jeroboam, continued all the days of his life, Abijam's life. And the rest of the acts of his life and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah. Now, where's that book? You'll hear that. You'll hear about these things. Um, and I, we, we looked at the thing one last week. There, there's these mentions uh, of these other books that exist. We don't know. We don't have them. Nobody has them. They're nowhere. Um, apparently, we don't need them because you know what? You don't. The Bible's not about this bad king anyway. We don't need all the details of how terrible he was. We just know he was bad. He only needs a few lines. We got the picture. We have the old, the, we have the, 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 the big picture of the struggle that God is having with these rebellious people, right? Um, and then we learn from it um, uh, by applying this to our own lives, looking at our, our lives, saying, are we rebellious like this? Um, verse 8, he dies. And he's buried in the city of David. And then who succeeds him? Yes, King, okay, Asa, Asa. And he, he's a good, he's a good one. He's a good king. We finally got a good one. Yeah, we got a good one in there. Um, and if someone would, uh, let me see. Uh, watch out. Um. Without having you turn there, unless you want it and scan it. Second Chronicles 13 gives us a little more information. It tells us that Abijah, before he died, he decides to invade the northern kingdom of Israel. He goes, I'm going to take them on. And in one scene, he stands on Mount Zemaraim and he preaches a sermon, literally, to Jeroboam and his troops. And he's just yelling at the top of his lungs. Whatever this saying about how great he is, and he pretty much says, You know, I'm the rightful king, and we never should have split into a north and a south. I should be king over all of you, and you know it. Come on home before we kill you. It's pretty much wisdom. Now, the hypocrisy is insane because the southern kingdom is as perverse as the northern kingdom. Um, meanwhile, uh, we're told that uh, Jeroboam's um, uh, troops uh, were encircling the army of Judah. They don't know about it yet. And he's going, as that guy is being pompous and preaching to us, you flank right, you flank left, sneak up behind him, wait for my signal. And um, well, the army of Judah, southern na uh, nation, realizes that they've been surrounded, they cry out to Yahweh. They cry out to God. It says the priests blew the sacred trumpets, the shofars. Uh, Abiyah's army, then it says, were empowered. They fought with such valor that Israel, the northern kingdom, fled. And it says, quote, unquote, God gave them into their hand. Wow. No way. They didn't even have time to repent of their sins. But they called out to God. They cried out to God, and God answered anyway, even though both nations are a mess. But you know what's interesting? He goes, yeah, you're both a mess. You, you, you should devour each other. I mean, you might as well just beat each other to a pulp. 
Last man standing. But you know what? At least you called out to me. They're still doing the calf thing. But you called out to me. Even though you're not perfect, you're not, you haven't repented of all your sins yet, you've called out to me. And, I, and I'm going to extend grace to you in that I'm going to answer you. And maybe you'll change, maybe that will lead to repentance. His kindness maybe. leads maybe. us to repentance. It is his kindness that leads mm -hmm. us to repentance. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't repent. But isn't that interesting? That God actually defends them? We're told in 2 Chronicles 13, guess how many casualties, guess, guess the loss of life Israel's army took. 500,000. God supercharges the army of the south. They annihilate the army of the north. Half a million men dead on the battlefield. I thought Gettysburg was bad. Half a million. It says the sons of Judah conquered because they trusted in Yahweh. There was still something left. Skin of their teeth. There was still something left. They still had some faith. They still instinctively knew to turn to God and to ask God. They didn't pray to Baal, Chemosh, Molech, Asherah. They pray to God. Even though they've got all the worship sites, all the false gods, they, they pray to God. And I think that's why God answered. He goes, I'm still, still working with you here. Why don't you show, show you? I'm the only one who's, who's going to answer of all these false things you got. Remember? Remember the past. Remember the history. Remember your scriptures. Remember the ancestors. Your ancestors' relationship with me. Mine with them. Can we make a deal? You know? Look how I just saved you. That could have been you. They could have killed 500,000 of your men. Can we talk? It's rough. But you know what's interesting? It's after that God says, well, there's another way to do this. I'm going to put, a, I'm going to put my man on the throne. It's very good. Okay? And uh, here comes King Asa. So, we still got time. Um, somebody read 9 to 15, please. In the 20th year of Jeroboam, king of Israel, Asa became king of Judah, and he reigned in Jerusalem 41 years. His grandmother's name was Makkah, daughter of Absalom. Asa did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, as his father David had done. He expelled the male shrine prostitutes from the land, got rid of all the idols his father had made. He even deposed his grandmother, Makkah, from her position as queen mother because she had made a repulsive Asher pole. Asad cut the pole down and burned it in the Kidron Valley. Although he, had, he did not remove the high places, Asad's heart was fully committed to the Lord all his life. He was brought into the temple of the Lord, Lord, the silver and gold, and the articles that he and his father had dedicated. Wow. What's he do? He's a welcome change. Right? He tries to take away all the sins established by Rehoboam. Uh, there's a brief period of rest and revival under his leadership. You put the right person in the White House, things change. They change. Put the wrong person in, gets darker, gets evil, gets perverse. It's amazing. Isn't that amazing? Kings are very important. Kings are very important. Right? So um, he even disposes his own uh, mother because she was an idol worshiper. You know, he gave Nancy Pelosi boop, the poop, and, and out she went. You know, and he goes, you know, and that that was that's really that was bold of him. That was fantastic. Um, and um, he uses temple wealth to hire Syria fighters uh, for him because. Uh, uh, there's an ungodly alliance that he's going to make, and I think uh, I think we can do it. Um, let's go, uh, somebody 16 to 24. I think we can finish. There was war between Asa and Basha, king of Israel, throughout their reigns. 
Bashah, king of Israel, went up against Judah and fortified Ramah to prevent anyone from leaving or entering the territory of Asa, king of Judah. Asa then took all the silver and gold that was left in the treasuries of the Lord's temple and of his own palace. He entrusted it to his officials and sent them to Ben-Hadad, son of Tabumon, the son of Hezion, the king of Aram, who was ruling in Damascus. Let there be a treaty between me and you, he said, as there was war between my father and your father. See, I am sending you a gift of silver and gold. Now break your treaty with Bashar, king of Israel, so he will withdraw from me. So we pause real, real fast. Anybody get whiplash? Who's King Bashar of Israel? You're going to find out. Okay, because here's what happened. Again, in, in the Kings and in the Chronicles, you've got somebody trying to tell what's going on in the North, Southern, North Kingdom and then what's happening in the Southern Kingdom. And, 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 it, and there's a back and a forth and a back and a forth. And the thing is, somebody's reigns longer than this person, and there's, since there is no, nobody's writing B.C. or A.D. back then, right? We all know that, mm -hmm. right? We, we, historians have tried to date these things. But back then, there was no dating. That's why, I remind you, in Scripture, we're, we're told in the fourth year after the great flood. Right. Or after the great earthquake. Or in the sixth year of so-and-so's reign. Mm -hmm. They didn't know what year it was in the history of the world. They had no idea. They did there there was no it's 2021. There's no, yeah, no BC. There was nothing like that. So they 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 uh, they tried to date things by massive events, big big wars, uh, you know, 10th year after the big, you know, that's what they'll do. That's just how they try to date things. But in the midst of it, you, you know, you're tell now we jump to the south, and now we're, we're telling a story here, and all of a sudden this King Bashash shows up, and, and there's a fight between, well, he's the king of Israel? I thought it was Saba. Well, that's because during his reign, there's this King Bashash who, who gains the throne of the north that you don't read about until later in this chapter. Oh, just so you know. I hope I didn't confuse you even more. But he's going to show up. But the story's being told during his reign. Um, you know, Before if you look at all, first. if you read it all at once, then you go, oh, I see what happened. That's why this guy's introduced here, even though he's not really, his story doesn't really start to hear. But it's in the midst of, you know, <sighs> I'm saying too much. <laughs> Please continue. <laughs> Then Hadad agreed with King Asa and sent the commanders of his forces against the towns of Israel. He conquered Ijan, Dan, Ab Abel, Beth, Makkah, and all Kinnereth in addition to Naphtali. When Bashar heard this, he stopped building Ramah and withdrew to Tizra. Then King Asa issued an order all Judah. No one was exempt and they carried away from Ramah the stones and timbers Bashah had been using there. With them, King Asa built up Geba in Benjamin and also Mizpah. As for the other events of As Asa's reign, all his achievements, all he did, and the cities he built, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? In his old age, however, his feet became diseased. Then Asa rested with his father and fathers and was buried with them in the city of, of his father David. And Jehoshaphat, his son, succeeded him as king. Okay. And we're going to read a little more before I help you understand what should happen. Um, verse 25. Somebody, let's go 25 to the end. Now Dadab, the son of Jeroboam, became king over Israel in the second year of Asa, king of Judah, and he reigned over Israel two years. Stop. Nadab who? The son of who? Jeroboam. Jeroboam is the king of? Israel. The north. The north. No. Israel. He begins to reign over Israel in the second year of king Asa of Judah. Okay, again, we're trying to put placement dates. Okay? Uh... He reigns 
over Israel only two years. He did what? Evil, evil guy. That's all we really need to know. Keep going. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of his father and in his sin by which he had made Israel sin. Then Bashah. The <laughs> Who? Bashah. Who's Bashah? He's the guy we were introduced to a little earlier. You go, who is he? Watch. This is how he now enters the scene. Not, probably not the way you expect it. Then Bashah, the son of Ahijah, of the house of Issachar, conspired against him. And Bashah killed him at Gibbethon, which belonged to the Philistines, while Nadab and all Israel laid siege to Gibbethon. Bashah killed him in the year of Asa, king of Judah, in the third year. And reigned in his place. Ah, he assassinated him. Yeah. Ah, this guy's an assassin. And then he then he sits on the throne himself. I wonder how safe that felt to him. Nobody will kill me. Okay, keep going. And it was so when he became king that he killed all the house of Jeroboam. <gasps> Fulfillment of the prophecy. The prophecy. <laughs> Remember the prophet I Go ahead. He did not leave to Jeroboam anyone that breathed until he had destroyed him, according to the word of the Lord, which he had spoken by his servant Ahijah the Shilonite. Bam. Because of the sins of Jeroboam, which he had sinned, and by which he had made Israel sin, because of his provocation, with which he had provoked the Lord God of Israel to anger. Now the rest of the acts of Nadab and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the King of Israel? And there was war between Asa and Bashah, king of Israel, all their days. Ah, uh, okay. <clears throat> now you know where Bashah comes from, okay? And what, not only does he uh, kill the competition, who, who does he kill once he's in office? All the family. He kills all of Jeroboam's descendants. All of them. All of Jeroboam's descendants. He is the one that fulfills the prophecy. Mm -hmm. Right? That was given to uh, Jeroboam's wife, the queen, when she came to consult the prophet. Ah! Wow! Okay, so now you see how it happened. And um, it is 8 o'clock. Yeah, there, there it is. You want to take it? Read the one last little paragraph. In the third year of Asa king of Judah, Bashah son of Ahijah became king of all Israel in Tershaw. And he reigned 24 years. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, following the ways of Jeroboam, and committing the same sin Jeroboam had caused Israel to bend. Now, he reigns 24 years. I must say, in light of that, I'm glad our president's term is only four years. Yeah, for now. A max of eight. Yeah, for now. But I want you to imagine a 24-year president's term like that. Welcome to a communist, disgusting, sicko, filthy debauched, I mean, I mean, I mean, what I think is bad here, I read that and go, I'll go ahead. It could be worse. <laughs> that could be, it could get so much worse. Yeah. Um, nonetheless, um, it is also in this, at this point, um, Yehoshaphat shows up. He's going to get a little page time in, in 1 Kings, we'll look at that next week, Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat, Yehoshaphat. Oh. Um, his name means Yahweh has judged. Oh, yeah, he did. <laughs> A very appropriate name. So Yehoshaphat shows up. Jehoshaphat. Please never say Jehoshaphat ever again. <laughs> Everybody say Yeho. Yeho. Shaphat. Shaphat. Yeho Shaphat. Yeho Shaphat. Never say Jehoshaphat. That's not his name. I hate it. It's not Je Jehoshaphat. Yeho Shaphat. Yeho Shaphat. Yeho 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 Shaphat. And the ho is not even loud. Yeho Shaphat. Yeho Shaphat. Yeho Shaphat. Yeho Shaphat. Yeah. God has judged. Yahweh has judged. Yeho Shaphat. So Yeho Shaphat becomes the king. Oh, and it's you got to flip to the Chronicles. You got to go to Second Chronicles for his story. 
That's where it's found. It's not found here. Uh, he, he, he barely gets, you know, honorable mention. So we'll look at that next week because this is where he, he enters the picture. It's like, if you just go from the kings, you, you miss so much. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's awesome. There's then the, the prophet of Micaiah, if you remember what happens with that prophet. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. And then it bleeds into Ahab and Jezebel. Oh, it's wild Ahab. what is about to happen right now um, uh, in, in the history of Israel and Judah. So, well, then there it's 805. An um, observation. Yes. It seems like there was always plenty of gold and silver. Uh, even when, after Egypt carried it all away, now they got it again. Now, they didn't have modern mining equipment like we have today. Was, was gold and silver just like laying on top of the earth all over? The, the you know, I have wondered the same thing, and I actually <clears throat> never studied that. I never really looked into it. Um, um, I am sure there, there's got to be something in antiquity that tells us um, exactly how it was mined. Um, and, and, you know, we just, we know there was a lot more of it. Um, you know, you could imagine um, the, um, the seams, you know, the gold seams. Has anybody been in a mine? Mm -hmm. A gold mine? Okay, sure. it is quite fascinating. Okay, I, I took a tour of a, of a working gold mine uh, years ago, um, and it was in, um, not Sonora. I'm trying to remember, but... Um, was it anything like Homestead? You know, I've never been in Homestead. Um, but but what, what you do, you... Um, I, you you can find it on the surface. And, and it's not that it spends a lot of time on the surface. But when you see some on the surface, go down. And, and what happens, like in this mine, um, we went in there and, and the, uh, uh, the, the guide said, um, now look around you, do you see any gold? And we're simply under under these rocks, and there was a lot of natural, just natural kind of cavernous stuff like the Black Hills, you know, which I think is probably why we have some of these Black Hills gold. There's, a, there's some cavernous stuff. <clears throat> and you can tell where they did some digging, but they're, they're all just these natural openings. And he's, you know, do you really see anything? And no. He turns off the lights, and he flips on a flashlight, and he goes up like this. And right above you is the most gorgeous, it's just I'm amazing, I've never seen anything like it, this beautiful gold uh, um, vein, just just traveling down this tunnel, huh, and, and so, uh, you know, you know, like how quartz can show up in a, like in a vein, you know, it, it appears that gold goes that way too, can't say more than that. Um, but, you know, my guess is they found it and they dug it. You know, has anybody done some gold mine? Has anybody went into mines and busted some of that out? Yeah. I mean, we know it's soft, and, but I mean, I... So your homework this week is to find that Boy, out. Because <laughs> <laughs> that would be great. I'd be I curious. Really? Okay. Yeah, really neat. <clears throat> I know in, in Job, I can't tell you the, the address, but... Uh, there's mention of people who, who dig and like dig deep into the earth to find gems and precious stones. And, and so, you know, it, that's been around for a while. You know, those beautiful little things, crystally shiny, if it's gold and silver, that's always caught the human eye. And uh, they've, been, they've been valuable. So. We wear them on our rings today. It's on your necks and your earrings today. It's still valuable to us. Both the gold and the gem. All right, Janet, would you pray us out? Lord, we just thank you for this time that we spend in your word. And, uh, we thank you that um, we have Pastor Scott to lead us through. And um, we just pray that you'll bless what we learn tonight and uh, use it in our uh, hearts and our minds to help us grow. And we just pray that you would um, give everybody that's here tonight a safe trip home. 
In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, I want to remind you, everybody, uh, Ron Hughes, uh, he's going to be here this Sunday. He'll sing a couple songs Sunday morning, but he'll, he'll be singing at night. He'll do a concert. Please come. I'd love to see this place packed up. And in